Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How are we doing? Man, it's Tonelli here. We're answering your questions today. Today's question is on agents. What do agents do? Um, I've written down a big list over here of things that they can do. And we're going to go through them one by one and let you know what does your agent do for you, okay? Um, when most people think about agents, the first thing I have written down is negotiate contracts, okay? So there's a lot of different contracts that they can negotiate. I'm going to go through my agent, what my agent did for me. And this is typical of what they're going to do for everybody. So the first real involvement I had with my agent is when it came to the draft and negotiating my signing bonus, okay? And you can actually go even a step a little bit back from that. They're going to keep you abreast of what's going on with the draft, who's been talking to you, and you, you know who's been talking to you, but where's the real interest, where are the possible destinations that you could end up. So he's going to do all the communicating with those teams if they have any questions or anything. Um, he is going to be the one that talks to them about that. Now you get drafted. When you get drafted, you've got to sign. And so it's not always just automatic. Oh, yep, here we go. Yep, I was drafted by them. Yeah, we're going to sign right here for whatever you offer us. That's not how it works. And so the team's going to make an offer to you. They're going to say, Matt Antonelli, we signed you here, and this is how much we're going to pay you. And then your agent is going to help you negotiate that hopefully for some more. So I'll give you a quick, quick story. I've talked about this in detail before, but let me give you a quick story. When the Padres drafted me, they offered me a little bit less than what is called slot value. So each spot in the draft is given a slot value, which that's kind of, it's not where they have to offer you, but Major League Baseball, I don't know how they decided, but this is just how they, they, they uh, ordered the draft spots and what they're going to get paid. So I was actually offered less than slot value. I think it was 30,000, 35,000 less than slot value. So that didn't make my agent real happy. I didn't know any better. I don't know what you're supposed to get offered. And so he basically said no. And we asked for more than slot value. And then they said no. And then they went back and forth and negotiated and argued and all that stuff. And then we actually ended up signing for slot value. So we didn't really go any higher than that. I could have probably held out and got more than slot value. But one thing that I did tell my agent, my input, is I said, I want to play. Like, I don't want to sit around and negotiate and argue and all this stuff. Like, I want to sign and play. I think I might have been the first first rounder to sign. Some people might say that's bad business. I wanted to go out there and play. I figured the quicker I play, the, the quicker I can show them how good I am, the quicker I can go to the big leagues. And so, um, I don't know, I got to the big leagues pretty fast, just didn't stay there. So that is one part of negotiating, is negotiating the signing bonus. Okay, um, also MILB and MLB free agent contracts. So minor league and major league contracts. A bird just sound like it crashed into my window right there. Hope he's okay. Um, so let's start with minor league contracts. Okay, so when you become a minor league free agent, you've been released, you've played out your contract already, your four or five years, whatever it is, if you're a minor league free agent, you're going to have to sign with someone, hopefully. And so your agent is going to, and hold on, I just remembered something. For your signing bonus, your agent is going to get around 4%. Typically, it's around 4% or so. Some might be a little lower, some might be a little higher. But whatever they negotiate for you, you're going to get 4% of it, okay? Keep that in mind. So if it's a million dollars, will they get 40000 Hopefully, I got that right. Um, okay, now, let's go back to minor league contracts. Minor league contracts. So when you're a free agent, your agent is going to help you try to find a home, okay? And so he's going to be talking with teams. Teams are not going to call me. Teams are going to call him. Then he will relay to me which teams have called him, what they're offering, where he thinks the best situation is for me to get back to the big leagues, what level they see me playing at, what position they see me playing at, all that stuff. He figures all that out. Now, I will talk to teams. Usually when it gets down to the last few teams, I talk to the teams. So uh, I had a bunch of these years, but let's just zone in on, let's say my first, let's go to my second year because that's when I talked to the most teams. My second year as a minor league free agent, I talked, it was between the Orioles and the Indians. And so I talked to, G, to the GMs of both teams. I've told my Dan Duquette story one time. I won't tell it again because it'll take too long. Um, but then I will talk to them at the end and then we'll make a decision, okay? And he actually does not get paid on your minor league contracts. When you're in the minor leagues, like I didn't have to give him any percentage of, of my contract. And a typical contract for me was like, because I'd played in the big leagues at that point, my typical contract, I believe, was anywhere from like eighty to $100,000 a year. But he doesn't take any of that, okay? 
Now, let's go to major league free agent contracts. So let's say you're a big league free agent, right? Um, I'm, uh, I've played a few, I've played eight years and I'm about to sign a $200 million contract. Same thing happens. Your agent's going to work all that stuff out. So basically how it works in the minor leagues is, gonna how it, is how it's going to work in the major leagues. They take care of that. Now, I've never been in this situation to sign a $200 million contract, unfortunately. I'm doing YouTube videos. So it's, that's how it's going to happen. Same exact process, okay? Only this time, your agent is going to take a little cut of that money. I believe it's about 4% again. It seems like that 4% number is about the number that they usually take. Again, depending on your agent, it could be a little smaller, could be a little uh, bigger, but it's not going to be much, maybe a percent. That's about it, all right? So your major league, your, your agent is going to help you with your major league contract as well. Um, I talked about helping you find a team. So again, he's the one that's going to talk to the teams. You're not going to be running up and... Do, 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 do. Hi, Red Sox. Hi, it's Matt Antonelli. I'm a free agent. Can, uh, will you sign me? Although, funny story, my dad called Ben. I don't know how this happened. I don't know how it happened. When Ben Sherrington was with the Red Sox, I believe it was with the Red Sox, my dad somehow called him, got him on the phone. Don't know how he did it. I got to ask him. We should do a video on this. But somehow he called up the Red Sox and said, hey, guys, you should really sign my son. Can you believe this? I couldn't believe this. I yelled. I was like, Dad, what are you doing? I felt like uh, the embarrassed kid that was found, like you were, you were in the mall, you know, going to the movie theater with your parents and then all your friends walked by and you were like, oh no, no, they're going to see me with my parents. I never really did that because I really didn't care. I enjoyed hanging out with my parents, but it, you've seen the other kids, right? They're like, oh, oh yeah, and then they pull the hood over their hat. That's what I felt like a little bit. Like, Dad, why are you calling the Red Sox? Why are you calling Ben Sherrington right now? Don't do that. All right. So um, he's just trying to be my agent. Let's see. What else? Um, arbitration after three years of big league time and super two. So after you play three years of big league time or super two, we won't get into that, but essentially you're going to be arbitration eligible. And so you're going to have the opportunity to earn a lot more money. And, um, you might have to go, your agent might have to go and fight for you to get that much money. So let's say you say you're worth $8 million a year. That's what your agent says. Oh, we want $8 million this year. But the team says, no, 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 no chance. It's, $5 million or $6 million and you can't agree. Well, you're going to go basically to, to a, a hearing where somebody is going to hear both sides. The agents say 8 million, the team say five or 6 million, and then they're going to decide who wins. Okay. Your agent will do that for you. I never got that opportunity again, but that's what they'll do. And when I'm, when I'm picking an agent, that's one thing they'll talk about their, their history and arbitration and how well they do and, and all that stuff. So that is part of being an agent, a big part of it. Okay, now let's go over to endorsements. So there's endorsements that you sign, right? So for me, I signed uh, an equipment endorsement. So when I first got drafted, I signed with Nike, which basically meant I got all free Nike stuff and I got money to use at Nike stores. So you ever been to a Nike store before? I could go in there and be like, throw down my Nike card and be like, give me all this stuff right there. I really couldn't do that. I mean, I could get a few things. Couldn't say, give me all that stuff. I could say, could I have that? Um, oh, those are Jordans. Um, I'll take just the left shoe, but uh, I'll get the right shoe next year. That's what I could do. But like big time guys, um, they can go in there and just start buying stuff. Okay. So I also wore head to toe Nike gear. So cleats and a glove, which you guys have heard that story before and, and all Nike stuff. Okay. Um, after probably five years, Nike said, Oh, you're not going to be the next Alex Rodriguez. We don't want you anymore. And so then I went and signed with Under Armour and I used Under Armour for a year. And then Under Armour said, oh, you're not going to be the next Bryce Harper. I don't know what Bryce wears. Um, we don't want you anymore. And then I was like, um, Mr. Agent, um, Andrew, can you uh, buy me some gear? And so then Andrew had to buy me some gear. My agent did. Uh, and that's when you know your career is soon to end, when you have to call your agent to ask, you, ask him for gear. It's another part of being an agent, getting your guys gear if you can't get them a contract with somebody, an endorsement. Okay, uh, let's see. What else? Car deals. So I had a couple car deals, car deals with, you know, tops or whoever back in the day, maybe like upper deck. Um, and so you're just gonna negotiate a deal, not you, your agent, for you to sign cards. Maybe you get $2 a card, maybe you get $3 a card, maybe you get 25 cents a card. I don't know how good you are. Depends how good you are. I was a high prospect at one point because it was a first round pick. So I got a pretty good deal and just sit down, just sign cards. A guy comes to your hotel during spring training, puts a bajillion cards on the table, you sign it sign it, sign it. And you get paid for that. Your agent does all that, sets it all up for you. It's pretty cool. What else do we got here? Um, 
And then there's, there's probably other things that the, your agent can help you with that I was never good at. Maybe like um, other endorsements that you're gonna, you know, uh, vitamin water or I don't know, those type of things. I was never good enough for that, but your agent can help you with all that stuff as well. All right, um, keep you informed of what, other te what your team is thinking. So let's say you're on a team and your agent's gonna kinda, you, like you're not gonna run to the organization with any issue or any question. Your agent's gonna talk to somebody there. So to help you, maybe, maybe you might get traded. Maybe you might get released. Maybe you might get called up. Maybe you might get sent down. Like all that stuff, your agent is the one that's gonna relay that stuff. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna call the assistant GM or the farm director or the GM or anyone and, hey, uh, how are you going? To, how are you, what do you think of me? You think I'm gonna, like you're not gonna do that. Your agent's the one that's gonna talk all those things. You got a question? Call your agent. You ever played MLB The Show? You ever watch Video Game Matt on MLB The Show? Okay. I don't just call up the team. I mean, Video Game Matt might, but I call my agent. And I say, dude, get me the hell out of this place. I can't stand this place. Okay, he'll go work on that for you, okay? That's what your agent does. So he's going to be the one that talks um, and gets all that information for you. Let's see what else I have here. The last one I'll say is financial planning. Someone asked me about this in investing. Um, my agent didn't help me with that stuff, but he did offer someone for me, right? So my, my agent's not a financial advisor, but um, he has people that will help with that. And so they'll basically say, hey, here's a guy that I recommend that you sit down and talk to and see if you like him, all right? Um, and I think that's the way most, org most agencies work. They typically will have somebody with a background in finance um, that can sit down with their clients and help them. Don't have to go with them, but they're gonna just offer it, okay? So those are basically all the things that I know my agent helped me with. And I'm sure there's some things I forgot, but I would say I covered basically most of them. If there's anything that you can think of that I forgot, put in the comment section below and I'll try to answer those. Maybe I did forget. So that's what an agent does for you. Maybe I'll interview my agent at some point. I don't have one anymore, but I used to. I'm sure he'd talk. That's all we got. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills. We break down the exact mechanics that you're going to want to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.